654,000 people lined up for unemployment benefits in the most recent week. Um, you know, look, these are numbers that continue to tell us that the uh, the employment situation is is grim overall. You know, people are lining up for benefits, and you've got continuing claims at a record. Um, you know, more than 5.3 million people. Those are the people who, you know, it's not it's not just one week, it's not just one month, but these are the people who are continuing to get unemployment benefits. That number rising, frankly, because there are a bunch of extensions in a lot of states where you can you can file for long. You can get benefits for longer. It's part of, you know, the administration, the government's aim to um, to, to keep people, to help people out um, in, in this time of, of trouble. So those those numbers clearly telling us a story that's been pretty consistent over the past few months. And frankly, Reggie, uh, one economist I talked to said uh, the peak will be a million. We should not be surprised to see a million people one wow. of these weeks filing for unemployment benefits. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. I mean, I think the, the, the number that really impressed me, because y you talk about these numbers and it gets kind of overwhelming, was the one that was sent out last week talking about, if you look at the past, I think it was three months of uh, new unemployment claims, that that would it'd be the equivalent to the number of people who live in Philadelphia. And then if right. you look at, right, if you look at six months, then it's the equivalent of the number of people who live in Chicago, the third largest American city. That made it yeah. hit home for me. Yeah, really. And when you look uh, state by state at some of the unemployment rates, we have four states now, Reggie, that have unemployment rates um, above 10 percent. I mean, Michigan is the worst, 11.6 percent, but you also have Rhode Island, I think, on there, um, South Carolina, uh, you have California. And then you look at this chart, so you see sort of the yellow ones. Those are 6 percent or lower. These are the folks who are not feeling it the way we're feeling it everywhere. The Midwest, even Texas. Texas has, I think, 6.4 percent um, is what it has. So Texas has a, has a, a much lower than um, average unemployment rate as well. So for some people along that part, the middle of the country down to Texas, they're not feeling it as bad as everybody else. But clearly, clearly these numbers, even where they're better, are, are still rising in terms of joblessness. Yeah, and we should put, I don't know if we can pull out that map again, but we should point out just because you're in the gray, there it is, that doesn't mean that you're all right. I mean, it just means that you're the average, right? Yeah, you, exactly. For the rest of the that country, means you're just the average. Which That's is 8.1%, right. you know. Right. Gosh, right. all right. It's uh, tough. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, and then to kind of add to how all, everything is connected, as these jobless numbers go up, then we also see the foreclosure. Yeah. situation get even worse, right? And you and I have talked about this a lot, how one was feeding the other. This started as the housing market problem, right? And then it sparked a recession, and then the recession is causing companies to cut jobs. And as they're cutting jobs, the people who don't have a paycheck anymore are defaulting on their mortgages, and then the foreclosure crisis gets worse. So you start from housing, and now you're feeding in housing. It's this vicious cycle. Um, the, the foreclosure numbers up 30% in February, year over year, according to Realty Track. And then when you compare from February to just last January up six percent. Why this is significant? It's significant because still, you know, tens of thousands of people in the month were locked out, you know, of their home, and and, and the bank took it back, re actually repossessed the home. Uh, you have a lot of people who are defaulting now. People who weren't defaulting a year ago or two years ago, they're not defaulting necessarily because they had a bad mortgage, a mortgage that had a you know an exploding interest rate, but because they lost a job. And now you're also in a situation where it's showing us that, that frankly, the things we've done so far, the moratorium on, on foreclosures, the different things that we've done that all extended into February, maybe didn't help that much because you're still seeing foreclosures go up, even though you're hearing about all these different plans from individual companies about how they're going to you know, suspend foreclosures or they're going to have this kind of rescue plan or that kind of rescue plan. So what we've done so far is not slowing the pace of foreclosures. I want to talk about $30 billion because there must be something about that number. It was just last week AIG asked the government for another $30 billion. Interesting. Yeah, and now what, Freddie Mac is asking for that same amount? Yeah, I, re I read this report and I read it again and, and um, it's kind of a grim, a grim picture here. You know, Freddie Mac was uh, it's a con in a conservatorship. Basically, the government took it over. It is now a complete government entity. And it came back to the government and said uh, it lost a heck of a lot of money last year and in the fourth quarter and that it needs $30 billion more. This company in a, in a funny position because it's even as it's bleeding here, it's also part of what the government's trying to do to guarantee low interest loans and new loans for people to get people you know, in the market or to help people who need who, in the housing market. So it's really kind of getting hit from both ends. And um, it had a big management reshuffle. But bottom line on this one, it's already been taken over by the government and it needs $30 billion more. Um, Mark-to-market accounting. You will hear some people say that because of mark-to-market accounting, a Freddie Mac situation keeps getting more and more dire. 
What that means is the value of its of its complex derivatives hedges, the value of the of the things that it owns or invests in as that value keeps going down or frankly the market for them is so frozen that you can't value them uh, Freddie Mac has to write down exactly how much it thinks those things are worth and that means big big losses because you know these things are losing value all the time and there really isn't a market for some of these assets that are mortgage-backed assets that are that are on everyone's books the bank's books everyone's books